Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 9th, 2018 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Salt Lake City, Utah. If you are a penetration tester, then you'll probably appreciate Boyan's post. He discovered an interesting SQL injection vulnerability in a site he was testing that wasn't easily exploitable using conventional means like the typical wait for or case tricks that are typically used in order to exploit blind SQL injection. Instead, he had to resort to a division by zero error and use it to exfiltrate data from the database. Lesson learned here for the Defender, simple filters for certain keywords, hardly ever work. What you really need to do is step back, go to best practices, use your prepared statements, and then you don't have to worry about all these details like which keywords to filter and not to filter. And Trustwave's Spider Lab discovered five different vulnerabilities in various Netgear routers. Netgear did release a firmware update that you should definitely apply. In particular, because of a trivially to exploit authentication bypass vulnerability. Apparently, all you have to do for to get access to these Netgear routers is add genie equals one as a parameter to the URL. 17 different devices are affected by this one vulnerability. So double check if your router is on the list and apply the update. And earlier on Thursday, the source code for Apple's iBoot code for iOS leaked on GitHub. Now, iBoot is the second stage of the boot. This code is essentially responsible for starting up the actual iOS operating system. It does, for example, verify whether or not your version of iOS is authentic. This particular leak is probably most important for people working on jailbreaking exploits because that's the part of the boot process that actually tries to prevent jailbreaking in some ways. The code that was leaked is about two years old. It's for iOS 9, not the latest version of iOS, but probably there's still a lot of code running in iOS 10 that is contained in this leak. Apparently, the code was already available on some sites for the last few months, but this GitHub repository really sort of made it available to a much larger audience. The original repository that was published earlier today has been shut down based on Apple's complaint. But apparently, the source code has been available today on various other sites, including some additional GitHub repositories. And I'm actually here in Salt Lake City uh, teaching our Defending Web Applications class. And tomorrow morning, we'll actually talk about DNS rebinding, a vulnerability that affects as I learned today, Hotspot Shield. Hotspot Shield is a VPN client and it does run a web server on the client system. Now, this VPN client web server is listening only on the loopback IP address, 127001, so typically not really accessible to remote attacks. But via DNS rebinding, JavaScript can be inserted into the user's browser that will then execute requests to this web server. Now, one unauthenticated feature offered by this particular web server is a status of the VPN client. And this can be used then to deduct the user's actual IP address, for example, and further details about the client as well as the client's connection. So in short, using this vulnerability in a hacker could unmask the identity of a user using Hotspot Shield, which of course is probably one of the reasons why users are using this particular software. And security company Forcepoint came across an interesting new type of point of sales malware. They're calling it UDP OS uh, based on the fact that it exfiltrates credit card data via DNS packets. Now, 
I remember seeing this before a couple years ago where DNS was used in order to exfiltrate data from point of sale systems. This appears to be a little bit different the way it is set up. Also the malware itself uh, seems to be quite nice in that it's first of all very compact and tries to fit in with other software by calling itself for example update.exe and using a lot of log me in themes for some of the host names being used as well as for some of the files being dropped on the system. So this way I guess they're trying to attempt to not be too easy to spot when someone is doing a cursory analysis of the point of sale system. The malware appears to affect the point of sales ready version of Windows XP which still is officially supported until April 2019. I didn't see anything in the write-up about how the malware got onto the systems, but that often happens just via weak passwords or via, for example, client applications like email and the like that sometimes run on these systems as well. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please tell your friends and colleagues about it, tweet about it, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.